Welcome back. So if you're looking for a not so light read for the holidays, you may consider Rahana Rousseau's book, Predator Politics. It explores how corruption has derailed land reform and conservation programs in the Mpumalanga province. At the center of this extraordinary history of alleged graft is the deputy president, David Mabuza, whom the author says uh, is uh, very complicit in uh, some of what we'll unveil in just a moment. Rahana, very warm welcome to you and thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Tsipiso. Thanks for having me. So first, you say the book is dedicated to journalists. Why? Because when I set out to write the book, um, every single fact that will be coming to the North Gauteng High Court in this explosive court case had already been reported on by journalists who had faced death threats, um, who had operated under the most terrible circumstances, and they had managed to tell the story before I did it. Mm. But also, interestingly enough, you say journalists were very much at the center of the attacks on Fred Daniel. How? Not all of them. There was one particular journalist who had published complete falsehoods about Fred. Um, Fred went to court. Fred Daniel is this conservationist in Mpumalanga who had been planning to build a private nature reserve. And um, there was a lot of threats against his project. One was from a journalist. Um, he successfully won two court cases against the publication. And yeah, that story ended quite tragically. Mm. OK, so you'll tell us a little bit more when you say that story ended quite tra uh, tragically. But tell us a little bit more about Fred Daniel and why he takes center stage of this um, extraordinary web of alleged state capture in Mpumalang. So Fred Daniel is, an, he was an entrepreneur who made millions of rands in the IT business and then decided to invest it in a project somewhere in Southern Africa where he could show people how in a time of climate change, nature has the ability to heal itself and also to create an environment in which we can all live and prosper. Um, he had to work with government officials in order to establish his project. Um, initially, they worked with him. They were very supportive. But then as soon as Kersner International arrived on the scene and said they were planning to build two seven-star luxury lodges on his land, suddenly the government officials with whom Fred had been working were no longer interested. Mm, and at some point uh, in your various chapters, you have all of uh, this animal farm uh, theme names, like you speak about how the hyenas came out to feed. So now uh, he comes on the scene, uh, though much after Didi Mabuza was involved in Mpumalanga politics. But how does he uh, then cross hairs, Didi Mabuza with Fred Daniel, that is? They, when Fred bought, he bought 89 farms in southern Mpumalanga, um, did a lot of research, found that there were no cl land claims on any of them. Um, suddenly, new land claims started arriving um, in the late 1990s. Um, the Land Claims Commissioner had 50 million rand to buy farms. Didi Mabuza was the MEC for land and agriculture at the time, and he set up a parallel organization to make sure that uh, several many fake land claims were then processed um, and they also intimidated farmers into conceding to claims mm. that were not verified. Mm. And it's very interesting because some of those who are involved or part of this network goes to uh, several countries as well. I mean, the dolphin deal, you, talks about, you talk about trips to Kenya and uh, how a lot of effort was put into concealing some of uh, the chicanery. Tell us a little bit more about that. So when Fred arrived in Pumalanga, the department of, or the Pumalanga Parks Agency was already crippled by corruption. Um, in the first democratic administration, there was an attempt by the Pumalanga government to secretly um, hand over most of their best parks and reserves in the province to a private company which had been based in Kenya, got involved in huge corruption in Kenya, and then moved to Dubai. Um, the deal was stopped, um, and very few politicians, not a single politician who was involved in that corrupt deal, um, was charged, went to court. 
And so by the time Fred arrived, there had already been huge corruption. And I think the playbook was already established because they used the same tactics over and over again. Hmm. Now, what I also found interesting was your mention of the elective conference of the ANC. Why does it feature in the allegations you make in the book about the deputy president? It, again, it's about the tactics. So Didi Mabuza was MEC for education in the first democratic government in Pumalanga, but he was fired in, <clears throat> after he inflated the metric results, probably in a bid to make himself look as though he was a good MEC. Um, he, wasn't he wasn't prosecuted, he wasn't disciplined, he was removed um, from the provincial government. And then he said he used his time in the wilderness. He wasn't really in the wilderness, he went to the National Assembly as an MP. He said he used that time to build branches for the ANC in the province. Though the way in which he built branches, um, ANC investigations have shown, is very similar to these fake land claims that Fred blew the whistle on. It's kind of like you change the first name or you change the surname or you change a few numbers on the ID to create a new person. It was the same tactics. Hmm. And, and I'm sure a lot of people will be asking this because typically this question comes up, why now? And I want to ask you, do you believe that mm -hmm. these events, and I know some of them are recent because the case is still before the courts, do you foresee it or them influencing the deputy president's position? And is this also why you chose to write the, write the book? <sighs> No, I wrote, I wrote the book to coincide with the, with the court case. Um, Fred has a one billion rand damages claim against government departments, government officials, and Didi Mabuza um, for what he had been through, for the corruption-related harassment he had faced when he blew the whistle. Um, so the, the book was coincided. The court case was supposed to be heard in the North Gauteng High Court this year, but it has now been postponed until June next year. So the book's about the court case mostly. All right, thank you so much for speaking to us, Rahana Rousseau, so author of the book Predator Politics. So you've had a brief synopsis of what it's about. So if you want to read more, get out and get it.